hearts. Okay. Hi, I'm Mike Mose, and I'm uh, sort of the leader for dulcimer groups here at the uh, Senior Center in, in Calabash. Um, we have had four classes, uh, four classes which usually last about 12 weeks with beginners of uh, mountain dulcimers, which is what this is. This is a mountain dulcimer, it's a very simple instrument. It's a fretted instrument which is played on the lap. Uh, for those who haven't, let's say, can't read music as far as notes go, one thing about the dulcimer is that you don't have to read A, B, C, D, E, G uh, notes or the sharps or, or flats and stuff like that. Everything is based on uh, a language or tablature, which is just numbers. And the numbers are what these frets are. At an open string or zero on any of these strings just means you're playing that in the open. You're not putting your fingers down on any frets. So this right here would be the D above middle C. And typically a mountain dulcimer has either three or four strings on it, okay? You'll have your melody string, a middle string, and then a bass string furthest away from you. The majority of the songs that our group plays, although you can tune it a lot of different combinations, is DAD, where the string, the bass string furthest away from you is tuned to the D below middle C, middle C on a uh, piano, say. The middle string is tuned a little higher than that to the A above the D of the bass string, but the A still below middle C. And then the melody string is tuned to the D just above middle C. So essentially from the bass string to the melody string, you have an octave, okay? So if you are playing just an open string, it'll be this. If you want to go up one note, you just put your finger down right before the first fret. And on the tablature, you'll see number one, two, three, et cetera. So if I wanted to do a scale from the D below middle C on up, you go. Etc. Okay. So the mountain dulcimer, which is, is there are more than one kind of dulcimer. Uh, this particular mountain dulcimer uh, is got the so the hourglass type of shape, but you can get them in various shapes. Uh, essentially, um, the shape doesn't make that much difference. What, what you want is you just want a good sound. Uh, this class that, that we've held for the past couple of years, uh, obviously, um, if people don't have a dulcimer to play with, what we have done, our, our dulcimer group, we have provided uh, instruments for people to use. I mean, it's, it's one thing to have someone come into a class, at least in the, the pre-COVID days, come into the class uh, and, and want to play whatever our lesson is that we're covering that day. Uh, it's one thing to do that, but if they didn't have an instrument to go home with and practice at home, they, they really wouldn't be progressing very well. So we provided those instruments. And in fact, this last year, the center here did buy uh, six instruments, which are kit instruments. Uh, and they're made of cardboard, except for, except for the fretboard here is actual wood. And those you can buy on, you can buy online. There are a number of companies that sell the kits and Next 
class that we have, I will give you information on those. I will also, depending upon how many people uh, show interest in this class, if we have enough extra instruments, I have a number of them sitting in, in my home. If we have enough instruments to distribute to new people that are interested in this, then we'll make arrangements to, to do that. Um, so today, all I wanted to do is give you the basics of this instrument and how it's played and let you hear what it sounds like just by playing a couple of, of the songs. Okay. So, uh, like I said, it's played as a lap instrument. I'm right-handed, so essentially I do my picking or strumming with my right hand, and my left hand, I am playing the actual fingering on the different frets for the different notes, okay? And how it's situated on your lap is you essentially tilt it out away from you so that the lower numbered or let's see the, the, the lowest numbered frets are going to be furthest from you. Okay. This just gives you an ability because you're going to be strumming or, or picking your notes with this, gives you more room. Whereas if you were holding it straight across you, it'd be tighter. You can see this hand trying to move would have a hard time doing that. Whereas if you stick it out like this, your hand can easily move up and down the frets. Um, one thing I'm gonna do um, is just go over some simple tunes. Essentially all of our students, I mean, you'd be playing tunes, simple tunes uh, from the very first day that you, you start. And by simple tunes, I mean, it's something that you can play just using one string. In my particular instrument, I've got a double string for, for that D above middle C, uh, and they're very close together. It's just that, uh, well, for beginners, we usually take off that the doubled string and just leave one string here because you would be <clears throat> trying to get get used to picking a note okay and some people because you're going to be pressing down on um, the string right before the you get to the fret to get good contact you want to get good contact with with the string at that fret okay to get a nice clean sound So for the first things that you would do would be a simple song. And right here, I've got like Twinkle Twinkle or Little Star, which is the alphabet song. And you can see it's just going to be numbers. Because those numbers are the fret numbers that I'll play, okay? And since all I'm doing to start is just a simple tune that you're only using the melody string, you don't have to worry about fingerings of, of all the different strings if you're playing more than one string at a time. So in this case, I'm just gonna play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, okay? So hopefully you can see, since this is our first class, it's gonna take me a little time, I've never used Zoom before either, to figure out how to be able to show you the frets that are being played and especially if you get further along and we start playing chords and things like that, fingerings that you would use. Okay, so here is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star.
essentially all you're doing is you're moving your finger along that melody string and just press down when you get just up to the um, to the fret. Yes, you could play it, but okay. The reason you want your finger closest to the fret is to have the best contact with that fret. If you went away from it, so this is this is the number two fret. Depending upon whether the instrument you happen to end up playing is a homemade one or uh, or not, uh, it, it becomes more important that you do be close to the, the fret. Because uh, when I first started, well, I started out with like just about everybody in our group, we start out with the cardboard um, kit type uh, instruments. And those have surprisingly good sound to them. But then I started making my own. I, I made a few. And the hardest part for me was always the, the fretwork here. You know, to make sure that you had good contact with that fret, whether your finger was close to it or further away. And you can tell in, in my, <laughs> my instruments, they're certainly not as good as a professionally made instrument such as this. Okay. So, uh, you're just moving your finger to the different frets. So essentially, if you wanted to memorize this song, <coughs> instead of trying to figure out whether this is uh, a D, if you're playing it's open, a D above middle C, all you would see would be zero. So essentially, that song is going to be zero, zero, four, four, five, five, four, have to be able to read a note on, on a scale, you would just go by the numbers on, of, of the frets that you were playing. The only thing you would have to realize from the music standpoint is every time you see one of these numbers, okay, so how long are you going to hold that, that particular note? In this particular case, this was a 4-4 time signature, which just meant that there were four beats in every measure. That was the, so when you, I say 4-4, there's a four, a slash mark, and a four under it. The top four is the number of beats in the measure. And the measure is the distance between one vertical line and another. And the bottom four just means that it's a quarter note that gets, gets that beat. So uh, if you did see a piece of music, they would tell you what the signature was, you know, how many beats in each one of those measures and which note gets, gets that, uh, that beat. So when we went to the fourth measure, this is the first measure. So there's four beats, but each one of those uh, held one beat, so zero, zero, four, four, they're all equal. In the second measure, you had five, five, four. So you had, there's only three notes that you saw there, but what you did was you played the two fives as being quarter notes, you played the four as being a half note, which means two beats for that four. Then you went back to just having quarter notes, Then what you had is you had some fast notes. So I played five notes there, but you had a pair, two pairs of ones, which meant that you were playing 
for eighth notes. So if you're gonna play an eighth note in this, you can see that a faster or an easier way to play those type of notes is instead of trying to watch my finger on the one there, instead of going away from me, it's easier for me to go, since I'm already going away from me with the pick on the first time, to just bring it back over that string. So instead of one, two, three, four, that way, I go. And then and a zero, which again was, was a half note. Okay, but that's the extent of music theory that you need to understand really is just timing. Now, how long are you going to hold a note? Um, and just getting used to these scales. You know, the first part is just getting used to, uh, even if you don't ever memorize the positions and all, as you play and practice, there will come a time when you will at least have a feeling for where the fret is. Okay. Uh, and it will make it much easier for you to play. Okay, so for today, essentially I just wanted to, to present a beginning uh, for you. Uh, the instrument itself, like I say, it's fretted for your notes. Your strings are tuned with these tuners, okay? Um, most people will, <coughs> excuse me, will buy a little tuner, which they will, an electronic tuner, which, uh, which is battery operated, and you just stick it in one of these sound bowls, and you just play the note, and it will show whether it's right on where the note is, or whether it's a little flat or a little sharp, and then you would just either, if it was flat, you would tighten these, if it was sharp, you would loosen these, okay? Uh, if, you, if you have a very old instrument, okay, um, before they came up with these, uh, these newer ones, you might just have tuners which are wooden, okay? And they work very well, except if it is very old and that wooden dowel that you're twisting to tighten it or loosen it up, sometimes they're very, very hard to, to tune it minutely to get to get to a particular note. Uh, I have one at my house, which was donated to the center here. And it is tricky to get it to uh, write, just at the very right, right note. But when it does, it holds very well. Uh, they still sell uh, all the parts for, for those instruments. Uh, but even so, uh, it's that caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. If, you're, if you don't have a dulcimer and you are gonna buy one other than one of these kits from those online companies, uh, you definitely wanna be able to play it and hear it before you, before you buy. Uh, and you also wanna make, make sure that you know, so whoever you're buying it from uh, stands by by the instrument that they're selling to you. So uh, this particular instrument, which I bought online uh, to, from uh, Ron Gibson, who's out of Ohio, but at least on his website, they have a number of instruments. They had buttons that you could push and you could actually hear the instrument. So I actually listened to this, this particular instrument for a number of weeks before I finally treated myself one Christmas and, and went ahead and bought it. The costs of, of instruments go anywhere from, uh, if you were gonna buy one of those kits to put together, uh, it would cost you about 65 bucks, something like that. Um, but 
you can typically, uh, for the instruments that our group plays with, is anywhere from, say, three to $500. Uh, although, just as with any uh, musical instrument, you can pay thousands, but, but really, a uh, few hundred dollars would be plenty good. In fact, this particular one, uh, I even have a, an electrical jack in here that I can plug into a, an amplifier. Uh, because this is a very soft sounding instrument, pretty much. So uh, right now I've got my amplifier on. You hear that sound? I unplug it. Okay. Uh, if you do have a, a group of people playing, playing instruments at the same time, obviously you do get more sound. And one of the benefits of having this doubled string is you do get a little more sound out of your, out of your uh, melody string. The other thing is, okay, why don't I, I'm gonna play just to see the difference in sound. We've done that twinkle, twinkle, little star. Just by picking, picking a, that single, single string. Now I can play all the way across, all my strings, strung all the way across, without putting fingers down on any of these other strings. Essentially, I'm just playing these two strings, this, the middle string and the bass string, as a drone, you know? So no matter what I play, what, what fret I played on a melody string, all my accompanying sounds from those two other strings that I'm not fretting will just be background, just add a little sound to it. So if I play that same thing, just strumming across the whole thing, this is what it would sound like. see you do get a little bit more sound out of it and since you're only fretting the melody string that you still hear the melody of the song okay um <laughs> this is the like i say this is the first time i've ever done anything like this with the uh with the zoom So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play a few of, of the songs, okay, that we have. Uh, uh, since this is the senior center that we're putting this on, we all have our aches and pains of growing old, especially arthritis and things like that. So if you are considering maybe playing an instrument like this, but your hands are somewhat challenged, especially depending upon what kind of weather you're having. Uh, if you are only interested in just learning to play songs where you're just playing the melody string and your fingers, and you could use any finger for doing that, but if they weren't strong enough, say, they have things which are called noters. And essentially it's just like a little dowel not the kind of dolls you dress up, but a, but a wooden doll. It's just a, a little, like a peg, okay? And they just would hold that peg and they would just run that up and down and press down when they got to the, to the uh, fret that they wanted to play, okay? Um, so from, from that standpoint, uh, you wouldn't have to necessarily worry about your finger working or not if you use one of those downs. The only thing is that, yes, if you wanted to do more than just playing melody notes, or even if you're playing more than uh, just a melody string, you could still use a noter, only you would have to sort of tilt it up in order to just press down on a, say, a middle string. 
without, again, touching uh, any other strings. So one of the other simplest songs that, that we played with beginners was Amazing Grace. Okay. The only difference in Amazing Grace was that you do have some notes that are played on the middle string. Okay. So now you're not only using your melody string, but you're using your middle string. But again, you're only playing one note at a time. You are not playing any type of chord. Okay. So that would sound something like this. Um, okay. Essentially, what I'm going to do, uh, well, one thing to, to note, okay. Let's, let's say that you do get a, get a dulcimer to play and you're putting it on your, your lap like this. And, and remember, if you are left-handed, then everything would be reversed. Instead of it heading out this way, I would have it heading out that way. And my melody string and my bass string would be reversed. You, know, you, you, you want to make sure your bass string is the furthest away from you because you want your melody string nice and handy close to you. And one, if you just looked at an instrument, <coughs> excuse me, and, and didn't know a bass string from any other string, when you go from the melody string, which is the finest wire that you would have, it gets a little bit thicker when you go to the middle string, and your bass string is thicker, visibly thicker. Okay. So if you did have, have an instrument which somebody had wired, essentially, for right-hand play, you could switch it to left-hand play just by exchanging the positions of your bass string and your melody string. Flip this thing around and then go ahead and play it like this. Uh, I know there's a ton of things I'm forgetting right now. But, uh, anyway, oh, the other thing. Since you're, no matter right hand or left hand, you're sitting here with this instrument on your lap and this is away from you. And here you're going to be hitting notes. And if you're just hitting it softly like this, it doesn't make a difference. But if you're going to be really hitting it hard, you might start pushing the instrument off your lap. And you have to worry about it falling off your lap. That's why with, with this particular instrument that I bought, I do have a strap which you put around your back and I'll hold it so that it's, you don't have to worry about it falling off your lap. So what people do, is they will, first of all, instead of uh, sitting and, and having their knees essentially a little bit below your hips so that it's downward, they will buy these little things that they put under their feet and they would then have your feet up like this to make sure that this is laying completely flat, which helps to hold it on your lap. The other thing is uh, they will use those little, uh, again, since we're older, if you're trying to open a jar, your hands can't do it unless you take one of those little um, pieces, almost like cloth, uh, and it, it gives you a grip. Essentially, you would have that kind of material, and they also use those for, I guess, lining shelves and things like that. You just take a couple of pieces like that, and you put one on this leg, one on this leg, and it helps to hold your, your instrument on your lap. Because, well, to begin with, you're, you're probably not going to have a very expensive instrument, or you'll have a homemade one uh, that someone like, like us uh, give to you to play with. But if you get to the point where, yes, you do want to buy an instrument, and let's say you spent a few hundred dollars for it, obviously, 
at that point, you, you want to take very good care of it. And uh, I've heard horror stories of people laying the instrument down on a chair, going back, sitting down right on it, breaking because this is very thin, thin wood. Um, so, um, if you are going to buy an instrument, a professionally made instrument, I would say that it would pay you insurance wise to go ahead and have them put in these little studs on the end, which you can slip over and put your belt on. Okay, so the only other thing I wanted to do, and in future lessons, what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to figure out how I can, how I can best display the frets. Um, in fact, I would turn this around so that essentially I would almost be reaching around the back of, of the screen there with this in the front. And I would just play this so you could see whatever song we're, we're doing. Uh, you could see the fingering for it and everything. And that, that's another thing as far as the music goes. Uh, what we do, we have a lot of music, uh, hundreds and hundreds of songs uh, that we've played. And I've I've got them all on my computer and all. So what I've done is any students who, who want to, you know, get into playing this instrument, what I would do is I would ask them for their email addresses and I will send you, uh, by your email, I will send you songs that we're going to be doing so that you can play them at home and, and practice. And any problems that you have uh, with it, whether it's fingering or, or some other problem, you could uh, bring to my attention, you know, either in class or, or just send me other emails. And by the way, my email address is, you have a piece of paper and a pencil down, I will give it to you. So again, my name is Mike Mose. So my email address is Mose, M-O-H-S, Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, at A-T-T dot net. Uh, anyone who sends me an email, uh, you know, uh, letting me know that they're interested in learning, whether they have an instrument or not, if it's an old instrument or if it's a newer one, um, that kind of information would help me. Uh, we do use, as I said, we do use uh, those tuners. Uh, but in those tuners, I think they're like less than $10. I mean, all of this type of stuff you can, you can buy online. Uh, but you wouldn't even need to do that because you have apps. As long as you have a phone that you can put an app on, there are apps for tuners. So essentially you download the app onto your phone. You know, you go ahead and you pull up that tuner app Hold your phone next to the string when you hit it, and that and that particular app will show you again whether what note it is tuned to, you know, and whether it's right on the note or whether it's flat or sharp, so that you can go ahead and tune your tuning keys here, and then keep keep playing that note for your for your app to listen to, and it'll tell you when you're you're where you want to be, and you can do that for all your strings, okay? So it's very simple. Um, well, that's one less expense that you would have. You, know? um, you can get into playing this instrument very, very cheaply, like I said. Um, also, with uh, if you do have any problems with a particular instrument that you end up playing with, uh, just let me know, uh, and I'll uh, see you how much help I can be in, in solving that problem for you. Or if I, if I can't solve it, 
why they can't solve it and, and maybe give you a, a clue as to who might be able to. Okay. I mean, I'm by no means an absolute expert on, on, um, on these instruments. I didn't even know, I moved down here to South Carolina seven years ago, and I didn't know until six years ago when my neighbor behind me, Vince Nags, who you might even start seeing collaborating with me on, on these lessons, uh, had a bunch of these instruments and, and got me interested in them. Okay. But they are very easy to play. You, you can play lots of different music. Now, this is not just for playing uh, either spiritual music or country music. You can play modern music. I've got a, a book at home that I bought, which is all Beatles music. And, and I play that. So. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to play a couple tunes here. Just to sort of give you a little bit of the, the range of things that you can play. Okay. And I see that that's glare. Okay. So this is called Rosin the Bowl. Rise in the bowl. And then I'm just going to play one more. Actually, there's a couple more I'd like to play. But I'm just going to play one more. Okay. And that's just going to be Spanish is a loving tongue. Okay. It's uh, essentially it's three four time, which means there's three beats in a, in a measure, and a quarter note gets the beat. And this essentially most of this piece is just an alternating half notes and quarter notes. Nice soothing type of, of song. Uh, and again, it's in that one. Okay, in that song, yes. One thing that was different, that it, it started out, it's a, you have a number of notes which are played singly, just picked, you start out two, two. But then you do play a chord, two, two, four. Then you play a single four, another chord, another chord. And you can see, hopefully you can hear from this podcast, the, the more rich sound that you get when you do play, instead of just a single two or a single four, if you play the two, two, four, 
just have it has more body to it, more richness. Um, and that that's why hopefully anyone who do does get into playing uh, this instrument or any other instrument that you do get to the point where, where you're, you're playing chords because you're just going to enjoy the music so much more. Uh, so just leave you with what the instrument is like. Uh, let, uh, let us know if, if you're interested in, in learning this instrument or, or if you have an instrument, maybe you, uh, a relative had one and, uh, and has passed it on to you or you have access to it, you know, and, and we can get it to the, the shape where it's playable again if it has been sitting for years. Hopefully, if it was sitting for years, someone loosened the strings so it wouldn't cause your instrument to warp. Because uh, I did have a, a couple that were donated to an organization earlier, uh, and I had to do some rework on it. But uh, but it's a shame if, if an instrument is allowed to sit like that. You know, you just want to take care of it. Uh, but let me know, uh, and we'll make arrangements to help you, or hopefully uh, we could actually provide one for you. Or if not. And you still wanted to go ahead and get one for practicing, like say those those cardboard kits are really uh, really do sound fairly good. Um, certainly would be something that you could play long enough, and and you can play any music on a cardboard one. You can play on on this instrument or on one of the more even more expensive ones. Um, it's just that if you do, or if you are going to get one of those cardboard kits, I, I strongly suggest that when you buy one, get the ones that have been, that the cardboard has been painted on both sides because they're obviously more water resistant and all. And also get, get a kit that already has the frets installed in the fretboard. You don't want to have to do any of that type of work. Because if you buy the kit, it's already been painted, okay, already has the frets in place. Essentially, all you have to do is fold the cardboard to the to its shape, and it'll be it'll be look more like a. Uh, it will look like this. It look like this. It's more of a. It's not a trapezoid, but it's. Uh, thinner at one end than at the other, okay? So this would be the, the thinner end, this is the thicker end. You know, and here's your, your fretboard with all the frets already in place. All you'd have to do is, after you've glued the cardboard together, uh, you would put in your, your nut piece here, and your bridge at the other end, which is what the strings are stri stretched across. And then you would install, you would install your tuning keys, which are also included in those kits. Okay, very simple. And in fact, uh, I would certainly help if, if you needed uh, help putting it together or whatever, you know, I could do that. Um, so let me know uh, if you're interested at all uh, and, and how we could get you involved in, in this class and, and get you actually playing and practicing this thing and coming to, to enjoy it, I hope so. So I, I think that, that is it for today. And this, like I say, this is the first time I've ever used Zoom. Uh, so hopefully I will get much better as, as time goes on. So let's see here.